If you have a job and you want to travel extensively, you either need a lot of vacation time or the ability to work on the road. Now, I can't help you with the first one, but I can definitely help you with the second one. In this video, we'll show you how to get home and office quality internet service while traveling in your RV, camper, trailer, or van that will allow you to get out there more, stay out there longer, and travel further. We'll get you set up so that you can put in a full day's work if you need to, performing all the things you normally perform, including video conferencing calls like Zoom, file transfers, and video streaming. Now, like most things in life, it's not that hard once someone shows you how and what tools to use. That's what we're gonna do in this video. I'm Scruffy Golden, you're gonna wanna stick around for this one. Okay, so before we can understand the solution, we have to understand the problem. When you're traveling and camping, there are three ways you can get internet service. There's satellite, there's Wi-Fi, and there's cell service that has data or internet in it. None of these are available enough, reliable enough, or resilient enough for you to be able to put in a full day's work safely. So let's look at each of these in turn, starting with satellites. The conventional approach has been something like HughesNet, which takes satellites and puts them far enough out into space that a few satellites can cover distance on the Earth. The problem is they're too far from Earth, so when your computer tries to talk to that satellite, the amount of time it takes to get from here to there and back is too long. That's called latency, which is another word for lag. And sensitive services that you use, like Zoom calls, cannot handle it. They will break down every single time because there's just too much interruption. Now, I can hear a lot of you saying, but Scruffy, you just did a video on Starlink and said it was a game changer. It is going to be a game changer. What Elon Musk and Starlink has done is instead of putting a few satellites a long way from Earth, they're putting a lot of satellites in close to Earth. And what that has done is that has reduced the latency from here to there so that things like Zoom are absolutely no problem. And in fact, it works brilliantly, I promise you. So what's the problem here? Starlink still isn't a viable product for most people. If you look at my other video, we go into some of this and you'll see that most places simply don't have coverage, either satellite coverage or service from Starlink, and thus it won't be anything you can use for another year or two, or frankly three. So the bottom line is while Starlink is absolutely going to be a game changer, it's my favorite solution here at the moment, it's just simply not gonna be here in any meaningful way anytime soon. So satellites, no go. Okay, so let's look at Wi-Fi, probably our second favorite choice. Here you've got a couple of possibilities. One is you can go into a place of business like Starbucks or Panera Bread or McDonald's and you can use their Wi-Fi on the premise. The other is campground Wi-Fi. So let's break these two down. Going into a place of business is not a bad option if you need large chunks of internet in small doses. What I mean by that is if you're a YouTuber who just needs to upload files once a week Going into one of these places is actually a great choice. I've found that their internet is actually usually pretty good. The problem is you can't perform your job there all day, every day. They won't let you stay there six, eight, 10 hours. You don't wanna be having video conferencing calls in their place of business anyway. You just can't stay there that long regardless of how much coffee you drink or how many hamburgers you eat. So that's just not an option for people putting in a full-time job. That leaves campground Wi-Fi. My experience is that the only thing worse than hotel Wi-Fi are campground Wi-Fi. And there's a few reasons for this. The first is the internet connection that the campground gets is usually not very good. The reason for that is in many cases they're in a remote location and don't have the option to a whole lot of internet bandwidth. But let's say for a second they get it. Let's say they avoid strike one and they get a decent amount of internet bandwidth or as much as they can get. The second problem is that it may not be enough to handle all the campers and RVs and tents that are using that internet in the park. Some of these parks literally have a thousand RVs in them. And each one of those RVs is holding parents trying to do their job, streaming Netflix and Amazon Prime while their kids are playing games and maybe even remote learning. They're all holding multiple devices, all sucking off the internet at the same time. In many cases, it doesn't matter how big the pipe to the RV park is when you've got more RVs coming off of it than it can handle. That's strike two. 
but strike three is the killer. Most of these places, even if they have enough internet access, have the access points in one spot. Typically it's in the clubhouse or it's in the, the place where you register. And the farther away you and your vehicle get from that, the worse the signal is. So now you've got to worry about a place getting enough internet to begin with. If they have enough, is it enough to spread around the park? And if that's the case, are you close enough to get a decent amount of that internet access? So let's look at cellular service. Now this one's not the worst idea. We are all able to get reasonable amounts of browsing and texting and video streaming on our phones and tablets. And everybody's heard unlimited text and data. That's just not true. It's just not the case. So let's break down cellular for a second. The problems with cellular aren't entirely unlike the problems with Wi-Fi. It starts with the internet connection. Your cell phone connects to a cell tower and that cell tower connects to the internet. The first order of business is, is there enough internet bandwidth at that tower? That's strike one. Then like Wi-Fi, strike two is how many people are tied into that tower using that internet access? That's strike two. We've all had the situation where we've got multiple bars, maybe full bars on our phone, but we can't even get a text out. And that's often because so many people are sitting on that tower that there's no room for you to get out the door. This is what happens when you're in a major city, maybe you're downtown, and one minute you have just blazing killer internet access through your cellular provider, but then the Major League Baseball game or the National Football League game starts, and all of a sudden you can't do anything because 40 to 80,000 people are going through those few cell towers, and that's what's going on there. And then strike three, of course, is how far are you from that tower? But oh, it gets worse. The Cellular companies will tell you that you have unlimited data, but it's just not true. On your cell phone or on your tablet, you can actually only use so much data in a monthly period, and it's usually not enough to get your job done. The second thing you have to worry about is what's called throttling, where at some point they will stop you from using the full amount of bandwidth that you need to do your job. You need at least five megabits a second in order to be able to perform a video call on your phone, tablet, or computer. The cell companies know this, and they will cut it back so that you're not able to take some of these heavier, bandwidth hogging services. It'll work at first, but then they'll start to cut you back when they realize you're using too much. And that brings us to the final problem, which is the cell companies know that things like computers are the ones that are gonna take up the most bandwidth. And you can't connect this typically to your cell company directly. You're gonna put it through your phone or your tablet as a hotspot. So more and more, they're preventing you from either using your cell phone or tablet as a hotspot and forcing you to either buy data plans that are exorbitantly priced for data or to buy one of their hotspots. But even those hotspots will not get you very far down the road. Whether you're connected to the internet through a hotspot or directly with your cell phone, cellular service flickers a lot and it doesn't take much in order to knock your Zoom call out. More sensitive services like this need a resiliency to their internet connection that you just can't get through cell service. Okay, so it sounds hopeless, and I think, frankly, most people have come to the conclusion that it is, but it's not. What you need is a little help with the technology, and in fact, what we're gonna do is instead of relying on any one of those, which I think we've proven you can't rely on, we're gonna combine them in a way that you can. This is one of my favorite new pieces of technology. This is the Pepwave Max Transit Pro E. It replaces the Max Transit Duo and it combines all of the internet sources that we've talked about in a way that you can actually work on the road without fear. On one side, we've got seven antennas. You've got two Wi-Fi antennas, one GPS antenna, and no less than four cellular antenna. These four cellular connections feed into four SIM slots or four data plans that you can have in two modems. Now, that sounds kind of complicated, but here's the deal. I can have two carriers working at the same time on here, say, AT&T and Verizon, and each one of those can have up to two SIM cards in it, pumping in two data plans for a total of four possibles. On the other side, we have a couple of power connectors. Don't worry about that. They have AC and they have DC. All you need to know for now, in this video at least, is that the, this thing plugs in and requires electricity. But you'll notice I also have several WAN and LAN connectors. 
you can use these for several things, but one of them is plugging in that Starlink dish that we talked so much about in the last video. Now, at a high level, this little guy does several things. One of the things it does is it lets you take multiple inputs, different, you know, multiple forms of internet, and if one of them flickers, like your cell service, and starts to threaten your Zoom call or your file transfer, it will hold that connection while it kicks one of the others into a hot failover situation. In essence, you can take multiple unreliable sources of internet, put them together in a way that is rock solid. If you're still with me, I can hear what you're thinking. Well, sure, Scruffy, we can have all kinds of internet possibilities if we're willing to pay a million dollars a month well, we've already established that the Wi-Fi is not that big of a deal. We can get that at any campground or in several parking lots, right? It's the cell service that you're probably questioning me on. And here's the thing to know about the cell service. There are plans out there that are made specifically for this kind of a device. They're not your general plans that you put into your cell phone or your tablet or even into a hotspot. Their plans specifically made to go into this kind of a device. This is not the place to discuss those, and frankly, it changes all the time. But what you need to know is that you can get cellular plans from AT&T and Verizon and T-Mobile that don't cost much more than your normal cellular plans. They will have extremely high data caps on them, sometimes 150 or 300 gigabytes per month, way more than most of us need. But they also don't throttle. And you can do all of that for the same price as normal. So not only are they not that much more expensive, you can often replace something you've got, making them even more viable. Meaning you can replace one of the kids' data plans or one of your own data plans or one of, you can get rid of the hotspots and put them onto here. It's a pretty short step to be able to have multiple SIM cards in here and have the kind of reliability I'm talking about just on cell service. As bad as cell service was, the way I just described it, you'll be shocked at how solid your internet service can be just using cellular plans and this little guy. We have all been conditioned to think speed, 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 but actually resiliency is way more important to performing your job every day than excessive speed. I was pretty surprised when I learned that a Zoom call, for instance, only takes five megabits per second. Most of us, in comparison, are getting tens or even hundreds of megabits per second at our office or at home. We don't need much. What you need is the ability to make sure that you don't drop a call when the airwaves bounce off of something. This thing does some other stuff that's pretty darn sexy. One of my favorite things is called channel bonding, where this can take a crappy cell service, crappy cell service, and a crappy Wi-Fi connection, put those together at a packet level to make a good or frankly great connection. That I don't want to get into here. It's pretty neat. Um, it's also not something where one plus one equals two, and what I mean by that is in order to pull off that magic, there's some overhead. So one plus one actually equals 1.5 or something like this. It's not real math. I'm just saying you're not gonna be able to put four crummy services together here and get 100 megabits per second. It doesn't quite work that way. But it does allow you to get some of that speed if you want some of that speed. Of course, it all gets blown out of the water if you can stick Starlink satellite dish in here, right? And when you combine that with this, it's just absurd. You're probably at that rate getting better internet access on the road than you get at your office or home. Now, you may be wondering what this bad boy is. This is not absolutely needed. This is actually all you really need. But what this is, is this is just an antenna. You'll notice that this jellyfish here has got seven wires coming out the bottom of it. Those seven wires plug into those seven connections on the PepWave Max Transit Pro E. This is not a booster. I, I think I mentioned earlier that I have found boosters don't really work for me. The FCC limits how much a manufacturer can boost a cell signal. And I know lots of people that absolutely love their boosters, but Maybe I camp in the wrong places because I have found that they aren't worth the cost, that they barely boost the signal to the tower. And even if I can connect with a better, you know, even if I get one more bar to the tower, as I explained earlier, the towers doesn't have enough bandwidth or something and it doesn't matter anyway. I, I do not use a booster at all anymore. 
but this is an antenna and what it the difference is it allows us to collect more of the airways and funnel them into this box I'll, this i have found does do an awesome job on cell service it can collect enough waves that it increases the decibel level on a cell service by is i've seen 10 and 15 decibels and 10 or 15 decibels will take you from crappy cell service into good territory or from good into great. So this I find has been worth every penny. If I have convinced you this is a great setup and it absolutely is, I can guarantee you once it's set up correctly, you will have rock solid zoom quality, file transferable video streaming internet on the road within reason, right? If you're out in the middle of the Mojave desert, you're not getting some of those although your Starlink might still work. You can work on the road. I can promise you that it is possible. The next thing you're going to be wondering is how do I do all this? Now I could spend another video or two explaining how to connect this stuff, how to put it in, how to set it up. But the simple fact is it's already been done and done way better than I could possibly do. I have got to recommend wholeheartedly mobilemusthave.com. I have no affiliation with them whatsoever, but they do a fantastic job of bringing all of this together. And let me tell you for a second what I mean. The first thing they do is they take these different technologies, the antennas or this transit router, uh, different kinds, and they put them together in bundles that they know work. That already takes a lot of work off of you. Half the trick to making technology work is taking something from one company, something else from another company, and maybe two other pieces, and putting them together in a way that works flawlessly. It usually doesn't. These guys have put these bundles together so that you don't have to figure that out. You can get on there and you can just grab the bundle that makes sense for you. The second thing they do is they help get this set up. If you've ever set up a router, either at work or maybe your cable router at home, you'll know that there's a lot that goes into this. And some of that technology, that bonding, for instance, I was talking about is pretty complicated they do a great job of getting it going for you. The first thing they'll do is they will give you the minimum steps. It's about five steps to get this online. It's a piece of cake. Anybody can do it, I promise you. That will give them the ability to set this up remotely. So they will actually do most of the work for you. Now, even if you know this stuff cold, whether you do or not, they offer a training class. The first thing they do is they give you several training videos. They're very good. They're very good. They go through this in a way that anybody can get it set up. You can either do as little or as much as you want based on that training class. And that's pretty cool. I do this for a living. I still found great value in the training session and the question and answer session that they have, all of which is remote. If you know nothing about this stuff, they'll get you going. If you know it extremely, there are some amazing things you can do with this technology. When it comes to the data plans, the cellular plans, the first thing I would recommend, for instance, the, is to look at the plans that, again, mobilemusthave.com has put together. They've got one in particular that's pretty neat. They've worked out a special deal with AT&T, no throttling at all. That already is amazing. But here's what's really amazing to me. That plan can be turned on and off. There is no contract. They're one month at a time, but let's say you only travel during the summer months. You can literally turn it on during the summer months, turn it off the rest of the year and not pay for it during those times. That's also pretty damn amazing. You can literally, and in fact, I think most people would find a way to make that a viable cost when you're only using it for certain parts of the year. So. I would encourage you to look at their videos and look at the cell plans not only available by mobile must have, they don't push it, which is really cool, but it's there if you need it. And that gets me to the second thing that you've got to know. The Mobile Resource Center is another group that is online that has seemingly come out of nowhere recently. It's a really sweet couple. Again, they have no idea I exist. I've got no affiliation with them whatsoever. I've never talked to them or done any business with them or anything of the sort. They stay on top of the changing cellular landscape and mobile internet landscape in a way that is extremely digestible and extremely current. Their website and their YouTube channel are absolutely fantastic. So we didn't take a particular deep dive into this stuff. What I hope I convinced you of is the possibilities that you can get office quality 
resilient, reliable internet service day in and day out using the flawed internet resources that are out there. And my hope is that you can take this and you can get out more, you can travel farther, and you can stay out there longer. If you found any of this useful, please consider subscribing. Live without compromise, even on the road, and I'll see you out there.